Shalom, man. Go ahead and stand. We'll open in prayer. Holy Father Yahweh, Yahweh in heaven, this is your servant, Kwame Tithu Hawkins, coming along, being a seed and servant, the great Khan Yishra Abel Hawkins, being this is your servant, Kwame Tithu, coming through my head, Pastor Yishra Hawkins, the last day's witness, the one you sent to teach and guide and direct us into your great kingdom, and through his head, Yeshua Messiah, the high priest, and soon coming king, and now sit your right hand, and soon we crown king of kings and ruler of rulers. Great Holy Father in heaven, I come along with the great priests, the great deacons, and the great men, and the young righteous future priests. We thank and praise you, Father Yahweh, for calling us here another great Sabbath, Father, and allow us to have the awesome opportunity to be able to keep the eternal appointments here at your great house at Abel. We pray and ask, Father Yahweh, that you will guide us this evening as we go through the uh, the words of your witness, as we pour out, uh, we re rehearse and go through this golden oil, Father Yahweh, that we continue to grasp the teachings that are coming forth from your servant Israel, that you'll continue to keep our minds clear and focused on the teachings. We pray that you'll bless Pastor, be with him, watch over, and strengthen him. Give him life and peace and safety and allow him to have a blessed Sabbath, Father Yahweh. We pray that we'd be a blessing to him always and never uh, be a hindrance in any way to him, your house, or to your work. We pray for our brother, the great Kanye Diddy, and all those in prisons and foreign countries who are restrained at this time from being able to attend uh, the weekly Sabbath as they desire to do so, asking and praying that you'll give them the zeal and strength to endure it to the time of your deliverance. And we do pray that the great deliverance will be soon, Father Yahweh, that these wars will start soon, Father Yahweh, and that your your family will be called home here to, um, to rejoice before you and all those who are desiring to be here at your house, and that the two billion people who are being called out of this great tribulation will soon be uh, shown the way to Abel. We pray and ask that we be prepared and ready for these things, being seeds and servants the great Israel Hawkins. Through Yeshua's name we do pray. Hallelujah, Yahweh. Praise Yahweh. You may be seated, men. Can't exactly say Shabbat Shalom. It's a... Uh, a little close. Not there yet. What day of the Omar is it? Oh, that was weak. Wow. Let's ask the women. Women, what day of the Omar was it? Yeah. What day of the Omar is it? 34. Praise Yahweh. I know we're all tired. We had a nice long week. We're picking up here in chapter 6 of the 10th book of Israel, part 2. Believe into the one cent. We're going to pick up in chapter 6 tonight, continuing on. Uh, last week we went over chapter 5. And chapter 6 is deception. This was the series of deception that Pastor gave back in 2010. This was deception number 19. The title of this sermon is, The ordinances and statutes that govern the laws need to be understood. Yeshua Messiah understood perfectly and is our example. And this was given August 28, 2010. And before we get started here, man, if we just um, turn over briefly in your scriptures, if you have your scriptures, or you can just write this down in your notes. In Revelations chapter 22 and verse 16, you know, let's, let's keep our minds focused on where these teachings come from and the importance of these books of Israel and the importance of studying and rehearsing these things. Our high priest and savior here, Yeshua, he said in Revelations 22 verse 16, I, Yeshua, have sent my Malik or my messenger, to testify to you these things in the congregations of the house of Yahweh. Okay, so we know these books are the testimony from the Malik, or the messenger, that Yeshua has sent, the great Khan Yeshua Abel Hawkins, the only one that offers and has the power to offer salvation in these last days. You know, and it's, it's offered both to us and to the world, to those who would grasp hold of it. We see the world's not really taking hold of the teachings, Satan's got the whole world deceived and they're continuing on in their own lusts and desires. You know, but we know um, here soon, we know the, the seeds and the message are being planted and here soon when their, their beautiful, uh, luxurious world falls apart, you know, and their lifestyles, their lifestyles fall apart, their, uh, their oil and their wine, we know they're going to be wanting to go after their preachers and they're going to be looking to pastor for guidance and instructions. You know, because from this house will be the only offering of life, you know, where, where it seems as if all hope is lost, there will be hope offered at the great house of Yahweh from the great witness Israel. You know, and praise Yahweh that we have the great opportunity to be a part of this in the last days. Starting off here, the great Kwan he said, now I'm going to introduce to you the best influence you could ever have in your life. You know, what a true statement right there. We're looking for an influence in our life. Maybe we're not looking for an influence, but we're being influenced. Well, the best influence that we could ever have in our life, the greatest teacher in the world, the great Kohan, our beloved pastor and overseer, Yeshua Hawkins. Pastor says, Shalom, everyone. 
This is on page 51 of your 10th book of Israel, part 2. Praise Yahweh. Man, we have a crowd here today, a lively crowd, a joyous crowd. You may be seated. May the peace of Yahweh be with each and every one of you. The sermon that you just heard I thought was marvelous from the great Kohan. The thing about the Peaceful Solution Character Education Program, I fear the ones that are needing it are not taking it, and I don't know... I can't force a person, of course, to take the Peaceful Solution Character Education Program or to follow it. You can only teach. Okay, you see the choice that everyone has in these last days, as Yahweh said in Deuteronomy 30, 15 through 19, we all have the choice set before us of whether we're going to choose life or choose death. And it's the same message that Pastor brings. He offers a message of life, of peace, of joy, uh, an answer and a solution to all the problems that we face in our lives, but he can't force us to accept these things. It's up to us to take hold of these teachings. In verse 3, and of course, that's what the house of Yahweh was established for in these last days. Okay, to teach this message, this message of the kingdom, to teach this answer to all the world's problems, this peaceful solution character education program. It was established for in these last days. That's the reason I was called. This is pastor speaking. That's the reason I was named in my mother's womb from my mother's womb from my mother's womb and by a boy that was one year old. The reason miracles were worked before I even knew Yahweh was guiding me. Prophecies were being written about myself, Yeshua, the last day's work before I was ever born, but it won't help a bit. It won't help you a bit unless you are willing to study it and practice what it says. And of course, you won't be a part of the kingdom of course, we won't be a part of Yahweh's kingdom unless we study and practice what we are taught. You know, if not, we just won't make it. You know, remember the, the prophecy also speaks that three out of four will fall away. You know, and it's not that, um, you know, those three were, you know, too dirty or smelly to enter in. No, they just, they chose not to accept the teachings. They chose not to train themselves. You know, sometimes um, the carnal mind has a way of trying to lull ourselves to sleep and try to convince our our conscience mind to kind of go to sleep you know where you know you come to the house of Yahweh you're excited you're zealous you know and then a little time goes on you know you get a little tired from working so much you know and then you start to kind of drag down a little bit but we got to keep our zeal you know this is the importance of the Sabbath day you know we should be renewing our zeal weekly in the Sabbath day so that it get us through another week and we have that same zeal that we had you know, 5, 10, 15, however many years ago, you know, one year ago, six months ago, however long it was when we first came to Yahweh's house and we had that, that desire to serve Yahweh burning within us. And we have to be studying and practicing what we're taught. If not, we're going to get caught up in this deception that Satan is pushing to the world, you know, pushing in such a um, strong sense. Uh, quickly here. In the, um, in the Mark of the Beast book, volume 2, which Pastor wrote back in the 80s, or the 70s, he wrote them and they were published in the 80s. On page 239, you know, Pastor's talking about this AIDS virus, okay, which back in the 80s, back in the 70s, it was a new thing. You know, it was one of their new gods come up that they were all freaking out about, okay, because people were dying so quick and so many people were taking hold of it. On page 239, Pastor says, Does mankind... When they know the cause of these deadly diseases, readily repent of having broken these laws, or do they seek to find a way to continue these immoral practices which have brought all this pain and suffering on them in the first place? Okay, and that was about 30 years ago. Here's a news article. It just came out uh, May 11th, 2012. And this, is, uh, this one's from CBS News, but it came out in different sources. But AIDS fight enters new phase with prevention pill. Okay, now 30 years after this big problem with AIDS, you know, now they pushing forward this deception that, ah, AIDS is no big deal. Now the 30-year battle against AIDS is on the verge of a radical new phase. The government is expected to endorse a once-a-day pill to prevent infection. 
Okay, and this, this new drug they have is called Truvada, or Truvada, T-R-U-V-A-D-A. -A. Now check out, <laughs> of course we know the reason for all these drugs, right? You know, of course, as Pastor said, will they, will they stop when they see what their immoral practices bring? Will they stop their immoral practices? No. No, they want to continue sinning, and they want to somehow find, you know, as Yeshua said, you know, a... Um, a robber who tries to sneak into the kingdom, you know, or some of the great priests have said, you're not going to sneak in a bathroom window into the kingdom. You know, you got to enter in through those gates. Well, the same with the world. They're trying to sneak into a lifestyle of peace, joy, and abundant living without doing the works of keeping Yahweh's laws, okay? And actually rejecting Yahweh's laws, abundantly rejecting Yahweh's laws, and doing the exact opposite of what Yahweh says to do and committing these sins. And they always look to their drugs to help them um, live a life of sin less painful. Okay, but as the great priest brought out last week, he was talking about the pain that these sicknesses cause, you know, but they don't do articles on those things because that would make people freak out and probably start reading their scriptures. But check this out. This drug, they say it costs around $11,000 to $14,000 a year. You know, average American probably be able to just pull that out their little piggy bank and just um, go pick up some of that stuff. They say they know it's not a magic bullet. You know, with all the drugs they have, you know, they have their supposed benefits, but then you, you hear the list of side effects and it almost scare you half to death because that's basically what the drug, it doesn't allow one disease to spread in your body, but it shuts down the rest of your body. And it's not going to be the right prevention strategy for everyone. It has been approved since 2004 for treating people infected with the AIDS virus. So let's see, 2004 to now, we've got about eight years. So surely the AIDS virus has been like cut in half, right? No. It keeps on growing and growing and growing and growing. Just as Pastor said back 30 years ago, that mankind does not want to turn from the immoral practices that would bring about the results they're seeking, but they want to have peace, joy, and abundant living and still go against Yahweh's laws and commit. You see the acts they talk about that the drugs would be great for people at high risk of getting the virus, including sodomites and people who like to partake in fornication and adultery. Of course, it don't say those exact words, but that's the idea they're given. The lifetime cost of treating one person diagnosed with the AIDS virus has been estimated at more than $600,000. So you see, they're making money off of these things. They're not healing people. They're not curing people. The world isn't getting any better. As Pastor said, oh, it might have been uh, two weeks ago, but I think it was last week. He said, you know, praise Yahweh that we care about what's going on in the world. You know, and he wasn't speaking about, oh, we care about who's playing the ball game next week or, you know, um, the fairs in town or whatever. No, he was speaking about that we care about turning around this misery that we see in the world today, turning around this defilement that we see, and that we care about bringing Yahweh's laws to the world, to mankind, so that they can see the true way to peace, joy, and abundant living because Satan's been deceiving them for 6,000 years now telling them that they can do whatever they want to do and they won't die. Okay, now we have to be on guard. It's just, remember the, the topic pastor's going over is deception. Unless we study and practice what we are taught, we won't make it. You know, we won't be there to be those teachers. So we really have to brace ourselves, men. Um not give ourselves any bit of slackness, you know, well, I thought, you know, I didn't make it to last week's service, but I'll, I'll make it to the feast. You know, we really have to push ourselves, you know, encourage ourselves, push ourselves forward in doing righteousness and following the teachings that come forth from the great Khan Yishroi Bohakan so that we can see the benefits so that we can endure with Him through this greatest time of trouble and so that we can be used to help bring peace to not just the world but to the entire universe. You know, Yahweh's his job that He's offering us is such a magnific magnificent job. There is nothing in the world today that can compare to it. You know, as Pastor said, sometimes our carnal mind wants us to think, oh, we gave up this and we left this and we left that to come serve Yahweh. You know, we didn't give up anything. We've gained more in our time serving Yahweh than we would have ever 
been able to gain or accomplish in the world, we wouldn't even been able to get a, a slight inkling of it. You know, look at the world today. They're, they're dying in uh, rapid numbers, and they're seeking to, I guess, the sick people with the sick minds want to kill the people who maybe ain't sick. You know, so they're seeking to kill those people who seem kind of healthy. You know, the world so defiled, and pastor shows here, going on here in um, verses 9 through about verse 13, talking about the sickness that you see in the eggs. You know, they're talking about how this E. coli got into the eggs. You know, and you see a chicken egg, how Yahweh designed it, how it's a closed, um, a closed designed food, you know, a substance, is pr it's protected, you know, dirt gets on it, you wash it off, crack the shell, pop out the egg, and you got a clean, healthy egg. Well, they're actually getting these sicknesses inside of the eggs, you know, and they want to try to, Pastor said, they say that it was something in the chicken feed and it got into the eggs. But he says, this is not true. I've been around hens all my life. I've seen them eat things that the buzzards would snarl their nose up at and they would make clean eggs out of them and I ate those eggs. And then verse 26, Pastor shows that these, the things that they're downplaying, you know, well, it just got in a couple of eggs. But these things are actually life-threatening. In verse 25, it talks about how they can cause heart, brain, kidney damage, and lead to strokes. Pastor says, now that's how serious this is. And they're playing down these eggs with the E. coli in them. And you know the people that have contracted this so far, it's not getting in their bloodstream or they've been suffering the same thing that this boy suffered that he got out of the dirt. If you remember, he was talking about the boy that was playing in the dirt. He got a mouthful of dirt and he came down with this real bad uh, sickness this E. coli infection in his body. If we go back to verse 15, pastor says, the defilement has taken place in my lifetime. And I saw it. I experienced it, but that's what a witness is supposed to do. He's supposed to experience it. I'm still experiencing things. I don't want to start crying, trying to keep from that, but I'm still experiencing things that Yahweh wants me to see before the end comes and Yahweh takes the rain and starts to govern the earth and the universe with your assistance as sons and daughters. That's what you're being trained for now. Praise Yahweh. You know, and Pastor, when he says he experienced these things, it's not he was out there living, um, searching after the pleasures of the, the lust of the flesh. He experienced... And he experiences today, you know, the, the sufferings and the sicknesses, the, the afflictions, the pains, the aches, you know, that we all experience. The air isn't clean. Our water isn't clean. Our animals aren't clean. Our ground isn't clean. You know, we have to experience these things. But you remember what Pastor said? He said, those who live through this greatest time of trouble will be able to be a better witness a stronger witness to what sin brings in this soon coming kingdom because you will live through all of this misery and this suffering and this affliction and you'll be able to show others who are suffering you know, how we came through it, how they can come through it and what's on the other side of this misery. You know, what comes when someone gives their life completely to Yahweh, to His laws and, and, and submits themselves at Yahweh's house, at Yahweh's feet and does what Yahweh instructs them. In verse 16, you're being trained in the Peaceful Solution Character Education Program. If you'll take that training. Okay? We're only being trained in these things if we take that training. That is Yahshua. That is our, our sacrifice, our Passover lamb. That is our high priest, this Peaceful Solution Character Education Program. So you see, only a fool would reject this great wisdom being offered by Yahweh in these last days. That is Yeshua. The Peaceful Solution Character Education Program is Yeshua. That's the reason Yeshua was rejected. He followed the Peaceful Solution Character Education Program that was taught him by his parents, inspired by Yahweh, and of course, we are to be like him. He's our example. And if we're not like him, we won't be a part of his kingdom. Pastor says, I am the last representative of the kingdom of heaven here on earth and salvation. You know, praise Yahweh. <laughs> Yisrael Hawkins is the last representative of the kingdom of heaven. There isn't going to be any other offerings into Yahweh's kingdom. 
Okay, this, this is it. This is the offer being not only preached to us who are called to the house, but the same message pastor brings us, he brings to the entire world. You know, and you see, as he said in the beginning there, he's just, that's all he can do is teach. He can't force people to do things. You know, and he's so merciful, just like Father Yahweh. You see Yahweh's character within the man. And when he teaches, it's, it's a humble, he's, you know, he's got it, as he said once, he's got it going. You know, he could get up here and he could just brag about how well he has it going. And if all you suckers out there in the world don't come sit up in here and listen up, you're just going to burn up in the lake of fire. But he doesn't do that. He tries to, as Yahweh does to us, you know, remember the scripture, what is man that you are mindful of them? You know, Yahweh, this awesome being, creator of all, and he actually cares for us, these measly little fleshly beings with all our stupidities and foolishness, but he cares that we would overcome these things and be just like him. You know, and pastor, he offers the same, the salvation that's being offered in these last days from him. He's offering this to the entire world. You know, many, as the scripture says, there'll be weeping and gnashing of teeth in the day of, of judgment, but many are going to be uh, sick on the opportunity they passed out, passed on. You know, you ever like, um, you know, you came across something, a real sweet deal or, you know, the donuts were really fresh and you should have bought a dozen and you only got one and you kick yourself later on. You know, this is what people are going to do when they see what they passed up by not heeding and humbly submitting to Yahweh's last day's witness. In verse 17, that is shown in many prophecies. That's right, the pastor just doesn't come saying that he's the last representative of Yahweh's kingdom on earth. No, the prophecies prove these things. They show that in the last days, there would be two who would be born of the same mother, and they would establish Yahweh's house. The house of Yahweh wasn't existing on the whole face of the earth, despite people having their own Bibles and their research and commentaries and all these things. It didn't exist until those two brothers who were spoken of in prophecy established Yahweh's house in these last days according to prophecies. The prophecies prove these things. You know, we're talking about the prophecies concerning myself and the last day's work. There were many more than there were about Yeshua. You remember the scripture says that this last work will be the greatest. You can even see that in the prophecies about the prophecies concerning this last work concerning the seventh Malik are more numerous than even those of the Savior himself. Yeshua had enough prophecies to know we could know that he was the Savior. He fulfilled those prophecies and there were enough written about him, but he's in Genesis. He was the first to fulfill this receiving authority that is promised in Genesis 1. I will make man in my image after my likeness. That is the Peaceful Solution Character Education Program. You can see we have to, we have to incorporate this Peaceful Solution Character Education Program into our lives to be in Yahweh's kingdom, to endure with Yeshua Hawkins through this greatest time of trouble. There's no other way to do so, man. There's no other way for us to stand firm, stand strong, and not be led into deception. You know, if we think, well, no, we can just... We don't have to accept that program and we can just, you know, do like we've been doing for many years. No, for many years we were foolish, we were stupid, we were idiots. You know, but Yahweh is trying to pull us out of that stupidity and He's offering us such a great set of guides, so simple that a child can teach it, not only learn it, but teach it. And we really have to take hold and not reject it. Remember, the Peaceful Solution Character Education Program will only work in your life if you use it. If you reject it, it doesn't work. It doesn't work in someone's life who rejects it. In verse 19, Pastor says, And some of the people get hung up on a scripture or a law, and they don't know enough about the scripture, and they're not inspired, and they won't admit that they need help. They won't go to the one sent or believe into the one sent, so they're blocked. Remember the scripture, the pride, pride comes before the fall. Satan uses his pride to close someone's mind and to lead them off in deception. They can't go no further. They can't understand it. 
There's the law that says something, but there are ordinances and statutes that Yahweh said to me at 3 o'clock the other morning, you know. This is what they're not understanding. It's my ordinances that govern the laws and my statutes that govern the laws. So this is the reason they can't get past where they are. This is their mental block. It becomes a block to them. You know, and think of a blockage. You know, think of a colon blockage and how if your colon gets blocked up, how your body starts getting sick. And if you don't fix that problem, your body starts deteriorating quickly. Well, this is what's occurring in people's minds who are rejecting the peaceful solution. They're rejecting Yeshua Messiah. They're rejecting the one sent. They have this block in their mind. And they're not growing in the faith. They're growing in deception. Let this not be us, men. So this is the reason they can't get past where they are. This is their mental block. And as Yeshua, one of the apostles, said, this mental block, the darkness is still there, even today when the laws are read. That's what they were talking about because they don't understand the ordinances that go with these laws and govern them at this time. It's part of the plan of Yahweh. Okay, these statutes and these ordinances are part of the plan of Yahweh. They go hand in hand with the laws and the prophecies. Go over to page 54 and verse 28. Pastor said, The accuser is the one, or the accusers are the ones that are not innocent. And the only way I know of to get past this mental block is to humble yourself. Okay? That's, that's just what Pastor was just showing here in verse 19, is that we can't be proud. Okay, the prophecy says it. Pride comes before the fall. We can't be proud. If we need help, we need to go humble ourselves, go to our counselors, go to the priest and ask. You know, beg. Beg for, for understanding, for guidance. Don't allow this pride to build up within our minds, which Satan would love nothing more than for prize, pride to build up in our minds and overtake our entire bodies. And, you know, we're back, you know, pridefully eating some pork, you know, and I've been eating this stuff for 24 hours and I haven't died yet. You know, the pride comes before the fall. The prophecy is true. The only way I know of to get past this mental block is to humble yourself, which you can do this on your own. Humble, your, humble yourself and ask a priest for forgiveness. Confess your sins and ask for forgiveness and he will go before Yahweh for you and get forgiveness and get you in contact with Yahweh again. And then we will start teaching you over again until you get by this mental block that was shadowing all the Pharisees in Israel. See, the same deception is nothing new. It was the same thing that was in the minds of the Pharisees when they had life being offered to them by Yahweh's son, a perfect man and they had this blockage and that's all they could do was try to find a way to accuse him, to attack him and they just desired to take his life. They would never humble themselves to learn from Yeshua Messiah and therefore we see all the misery and suffering they've produced for themselves in the past 2,000 years living without his instructions. You know, this is, this is what we see in the world today is the results of mental blockage. Okay? The confusion of the minds of these Pharisees, Sadducees, all those who turned away from Yahweh and away from the teacher of righteousness have brought about this defilement we see in the world today, so prevalent. In verse 38, Pastor said, I don't know what takes place in your lungs, or I don't know if you know what takes place in your lungs when you smoke a cigarette, but there are several chemicals that go in your lungs and your lungs can't get rid of them. One employee, they were smokers, and they had gone to the doctor, and the doctor told them there was no elasticity left in their lungs, so they had to start learning how to breathe over again. Pastor says there's a program called the Peaceful Solution Character Education Program that shows you how to think. We'll teach you how to think. Yes, we've lost that ability. America has lost the ability to think and reason. You know, and as goes America, so goes the whole world. And he made man with similitudes. Yahweh made man with similitudes in Genesis 1 that would or where he could actually make comparisons and see by comparison what to do and what not to do. Yes, this peaceful solution... 
This Peace of Solution Character Education Program can help us with quitting the hardest things that we might find what we can't do. You know, quitting smoking or overeating or lusting or, or desiring the ways of Egypt. If you go over to verse 52 in closing, Pastor said, But he's trained me all of my life in the Scriptures, and all of my life I've been trained in the Holy Scriptures, and I love it. You see how Yahweh brought him up with this love and desire in the Holy Scriptures? And every bit of it. And I could, I, and now I could write, if I could stand it, I could write 24 hours a day trying to explain to you, I hope you're reading all that I'm writing for you. So in closing, we, we leave with the same thing we started with. You know, Yahweh trained pastor all of his life in the Holy Scriptures. And unless we study and practice what we're taught, we won't make it. We won't be there with him in that marriage su supper it would be such a glorious day. You know, let us not throw away these things, men. Let's apply the peaceful solution in our lives. Let's continue to remain tethered to that chosen branch. And if you will stand, I now have the honor and privilege to introduce to you the great Kohan, Michael Hawkins. <clears throat> Shalom, men. Please be seated. Let's see. I want you to look at the title. Title of this sermon, you know, this was deception number 19. The ordinance and statutes that govern, notice, that govern the laws need to be understood. Now you have ordinances, you have statutes, you have judgments, and you have the laws, okay? A judgment is a judgment. You're not going to get past that. It's either for or against something. And then you have the ordinance and statutes. These govern the laws of Yahweh, okay? These are the things that help explain how to keep the laws, how to observe the laws, and so forth. And this is what is not understood by the world. Uh, but as Pastor explains these things to us, we have the understanding. And then notice it says, uh, they need to be understood, and Yahshua Messiah understood perfectly and is our example. Because people don't understand the laws... They think they know him, and then they come up with this idea of, of uh, that Yeshua, you know, he is the Lamb of Yahweh, but they come up with the idea that uh, they must sacrifice a lamb at Passover to represent him and so forth. But as we'll cover a little bit here, uh, you know, that's this because the people don't understand these things. We need to look at, uh, let's see, let's start off at verse, uh, here on page 57. Start off at the top of the page here. He says, um, We see that there's some about 26 different things on the earth that a person can get. You remember the, 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 the Kahan Matithi was just talking about, you know, the fact that these diseases come upon this earth. And as Pastor says, you know, in his day, when he was young, he ran around barefoot and everything else, you know, and you didn't have to worry about these things. But now, you know, the world's become so defiled, which we'll take a look at too, and to where it's not even safe to go outside almost, you know, because the place is just so infected. But of course, Yahweh watches over us and makes sure that we're, we're, we're taken care of. But at the same time, remember, we have to suffer. And why do we have to suffer? Because Yeshua Messiah had to suffer, remember? It says, through much suffering... Though he was the son of Yahweh, he learned obedience. And that's what we have to do. We have to learn obedience. That's why we have to suffer. You know, we're, we're not promised the rose garden. You know, we're not promised that everything, that we're going to have complete healing and that everything's going to be just great for us, you know. No, we have to suffer, you know. But it's to teach us a lesson as well. All right, he says... Um, he says, those things when getting the soil, and a child can catch it going barefoot across the soil. Uh, he says, it wasn't that way when I was a child. He says, but all these things have been invented and created by man's illegal lust. Okay? That's the reason why. It's because of illegal lust. There's legal lust, which Yahweh has given into us. But it's the illegal lust, the breaking of Yahweh's law, that, that causes all of these, these things that become invented and created by breaking Yahweh's laws. Because Yahweh's laws hold everything together. It keeps everything together, you know? But if you break it, then, of course, you have the results of the curses. 
Now, in verse 57, he says, Isaiah 24, verse 4, the earth mourns and fades away. He says, because of what's taught today, of course, by the Catholic Church who did away with the laws of Yahweh. That's the reason why the earth is mourning. That's the reason why these things are coming to pass. It did away with Yahweh's laws. And this beastly system that was prophesied to do so, to do away with Yahweh's laws, change the laws, change the everlasting ordinance, and broken the covenant and so forth. And you remember, this is what Daniel talks about. Daniel makes mention about the fact that they changed, they changed the laws, they broke the ordinances, they did away with these things for their own destruction. And now that's why mankind is suffering from these things today. Because remember, sin, we're living in the time period right now when sin has reached its peak. Okay? So since it has gotten to that point, the whole earth is defiled. And this is exactly what the prophet Isaiah was talking about. Jump over to verse uh, 63. But now the earth is defiled, and the people are defiled, and they're getting weaker every day. Okay? Every day they're getting weaker because the earth is defiled. Um, this verse here in the Geneva Bible, it says, The world is getting feeble and deceived. The world is getting feeble and deceived. Of course, the word feeble means to be weakened through uh, sicknesses and stuff like that, you know. But it's becoming weakened through this deception that's taking place. Because the whole world is following these things, they're suffering big time. Uh, he says, Pastor writes, he says, I'm, I'm working towards coming out of the world for everyone. Okay. We haven't got to that point, he says, but I tell you, we're really pushing it because I hate, I hate what I'm seeing in the vegetables and in the meats and everything. But we're pushing to get where we can come totally out of the world and not be dependent on the world for anything. Man, what a glorious day that will be when that takes place. Notice he says, I hate what I'm seeing in the vegetables and in the meats okay it's no longer just on the outside this stuff is getting inside the foods that we eat you remember that there's all kind of now whenever you have, have an outbreak about e cola it used to be you know that it was on the outside of it and people caught it and ingested it no now it's actually growing inside and becoming a part of the genetic structure of these vegetables that word in i n it means inclusion Okay, it indicates inclusion or location or position. Okay, so it's inside. It's inside of this stuff. It's actually gotten inside the vegetables. And of course, the animals eat it and it gets inside of their bodies and go, actually gets inside of them, their meat. So you can see how the world is becoming defiled and the people eat this stuff and they get, of course, they get sick. And whenever they have a recall, you know, it's not a small thing to have a recall. I mean, especially when you're talking about hundreds of thousands, sometimes even million pounds of, of food that has to be recalled. Turn over to page uh, 58 there, on, on verse 67. Pastor says, work is one of the greatest things that a person can do. Now remember, he says, I'm working hard, I'm really pushing hard to try and pull us out of this world, get us out of this world, so we don't have to be dependent upon the world. That we can take care of ourselves and not have to worry about the defilement. Because this whole earth, remember, is totally defiled. Um, but work is one of the greatest things that a person can do, notice. Can do, which means you have to do it. You have to be involved in it. You know, a person who doesn't work doesn't really enjoy life. Because if you sit around and everything is given to you, you don't appreciate anything. But if you work for things, you have a greater appreciation for things. But if you work, as the scripture says, if a man don't work, he don't eat. He's not worthy of anything if he doesn't put forth the efforts to work. And of course, finding the work that you enjoy, Pastor says, whether it's raising chickens or whatever. And he talks about the kibbutz, how, to, how they would uh, have kibbutz where people would come in. And one person might trained for position in milking the cattle, another one raising the, the, the eggs, raising chickens, running the dairy and so forth, uh, working out in the garden, all of these things, and then the Mashab. So finding pleasure is something that passes your time as well in, in the work. The work 
doing the work should be our goal. That should be our pastime, you know. It's like when people get tired, you get tired of work, stop and go to bed, <laughs> you know. But you should be working from the time you get up to the time you go to bed. You should be doing something, you know. Uh, otherwise, you've got idle time and Satan's going to use that idle time for something. And that's why people fall back into entertainment. And entertainment is one of the worst things you can possibly do because it rots the brain. If you just think about this, he says, you're letting your brain die. And you're saying, give me something to keep me from going crazy here because I'm bored. I have nothing to do. Well, of course, it turns into sin, and that's how sin exploded. You remember the, the nuclear baby? It's called the nuclear baby, the explosion of sin. Now, if we go back to Isaiah 24, verse 5, the earth is also defiled. The people are defiled. They're defiled because sin has exploded. It's the explosion of sin, the nuclear baby. The explosion of sin, that's what's coming on this whole earth. Now, remember, that's what's going to cause... The, the nuclear baby to be born is the confusion, this explosion of sin where earth has reached its peak with sin and everybody is so confused in their minds because they're breaking all these laws, they can't possibly have anything but confusion in their minds because the laws of Yahweh are being broken. That's the, the laws of Yahweh, remember, is the only thing that brings us peace. And, and if we follow those laws, those laws would guide us. You know, the laws of Yahweh guide us and teaches us and allows us to enjoy life. Like Yeshua said, remember he said, I didn't come to just to, to, you know, be here. I came here to give you abundant life, to show you the way to have abundant life, to live abundantly, you know, to where you actually enjoy life. You know, you wake up in the morning and you're glad to be alive. You're glad to be seeing another day, not to where it's drudgery. You know, and that, and that involves even even those who you know who have to go out and work out in the world. You set in an example. You're going out there setting an example, and that's what you need to keep your mind on. He says here in verse four, the earth mourns and fades away, the world mourns and fades away, and the haughty people of the earth languish. They're getting sicker. They're getting weaker. The word languish actually means their power that Yahweh gave them to begin with, that mankind was invented with, is getting weaker all the time because his brain is becoming more confused because of the things that they're feeding into their brain. Remember, whatever you, whatever you eat becomes a part of you. And, and, and if you're eating things with the parasites in it, those parasites are going to the brain and going to affect the way that you think, the way that you act, in everything about you. He says, well, verse 5, the earth is also defiled under the inhabitants of it because they have transgressed the laws. This is one reason that the earth is defiled. But notice, they change the ordinances. They change the ordinances, the ordinances that govern the Sabbath day, how to keep the Sabbath day holy. You know, the law is to keep the Sabbath day holy, but how do you do it? You have to have these ordinances. You have to have these statutes in order for you to know how to keep the Sabbath day properly. And they change these things. They change the things that govern the Sabbath day, the things that govern the laws that deal with the Sabbath day. Now, the King James Version says, the earth also is defiled under the inhabitants. Okay? Think about it. The earth, we're talking about the earth itself, okay, is defiled under the inhabitants, okay? The word defiled means to soil. And literally, it makes you think about the soil itself. But especially in a moral sense, okay? So defilement has to do with morality. You look at the way that the world is today with the morals. There's no morals. You know, people have just forgotten all of these things and they, they, they haven't been taught them, so they don't know them. So therefore, the whole world is in the shape it's in today. But it says the earth is defiled under the inhabitants. And that word under, okay, it actually means underneath. It means beneath, beneath these inhabitants, okay? And it also means um, a woman burdened or oppressed, okay? And think about it. With all of these sexual sins, the way that women are abused and oppressed, you can see the, the meaning of that word. It also means what's under one. In other words, what you're standing on, okay? Which is another place, the place in which one stands. 
That's what that word under means. So you can see it's, it's, it's not just uh, a, a phrase, but it's actually literal, that the earth itself underneath our feet is defiled because of the inhabitants. In fact, as Geneva Bible, as I said in there, it means the earth, it says the earth is deceived. Okay, Revelation 12, 9, the whole world is deceived, as the scripture says. And you know that all this has brought about sicknesses and so forth. And the, the uh, what we read here, and to begin with, in, in verse uh, 57, the pastor says, Remember, the earth mourns and fades away because all that's taught today, of course, by the Catholic Church who did away with these laws, that beastly system that was prophesied to do away with the laws of Yahweh, to change the laws, change the everlasting ordinance, and broken the covenant and so forth. Okay? The, the Catholic Bible itself is the Douay Reims Bible. Okay? And, and the, the 1899 Douay Reims in Isaiah 24, verse 5 says, And the earth is infected by the inhabitants. The earth is infected. It's sick. It's infected by the thing. And that's exactly what the stage that we see the earth today as actually being in. We see it in that stage. Um, Pastor says, I, and this is in verse uh, 76. He says, I don't want you to be that way. I want you to understand for every law that you have in the Holy Scriptures, you also have 613 laws, but you also have ordinances you have statutes that are governing those ordinances of love, okay? These statutes govern these things. Now, the reason, you, you remember about the woman who was brought before Yahshua, okay? He gets into that. And, and of course, these, these, these people did not know the laws of Yahweh. They had gone... You know, they, they, were, they were in that problem at that time, they were in that stage. And that's why Yeshua talked about cleansing, you know, and it talks about in the scriptures where it says that before the feast came, uh, that the disciples would go out and they would cleanse themselves. They would go through a cleansing process to prepare their hearts, prepare their minds for Yahweh, to be able to meet with Yahweh, to cleanse their bodies, which everybody should be doing that before every feast that comes around. Hopefully everybody is, yet you haven't forgotten those laws. Okay? And to think about these things, in Isaiah 24, uh, verse 6, it says, Therefore shall a curse devour the earth, and the inhabitants shall sin. And they that dwell therein shall be mad. Okay? In other words, confused. They're in a con totally confused state. Just as the prophets have spoken about in these, in these last days. Now, he goes on, the pastor goes on, he says, uh, verse 78, he says, I see that woman, he says, I can see that the woman being drug up there to them. And they came to Yeshua with her and they said, well, look, the laws of Moshe say this. Now, what do you say? What should we do, Yeshua? And of course, before the laws of Yahweh can be abided by you have to know them you have to understand them okay and this is what they didn't understand they didn't understand the ordinance behind these laws they didn't understand exactly what was to take place had they known that you know of course we know the reason why they did it was to try and trick Yeshua to try and make him catch him in some way so that they could accuse him of something but he was much wiser than that and that's why Yeshua when Yeshua many times when Yeshua was asked the question he answered with a question you ever know, notice that? You know, and especially the, the, kind, the time when they, they ask him a question, he says, well, I tell you what, I'll answer you if you can answer me this. And of course, you know, he caught them in their own, <coughs> in their own evil ways. But you notice the ordinances, okay, these laws, they work with the heart and with the mind as the person changes in order to keep the laws and the and judgments, and that you adjust to the laws of Yahweh, keeping these laws, these ordinances work with helping to change our hearts and our minds because as we understand how to keep these laws, you may know the law, but you've got to understand how to keep that law. And then the understanding comes, and then you can keep them, and then the more peace is peaceful solution. Remember, it comes to us, and we begin to understand these things. We begin to live it. 
And that's what he talks about this woman, he says, and these people. They didn't know, these religious leaders, they didn't know the peaceful solution. Had they known these things, they wouldn't have condemned the woman to begin with because they would have understood that it wasn't her fault because they hadn't taught her. And this is the same example that we have as parents with children. You know, if we haven't taught our children the proper ways, we can't get upset with them if they don't know any better. But the heathen... The sins of the heathens, as I like to say, the Gentiles, the sins of the Gentiles, it hasn't come yet to its fullness, as the scripture says. But what he means there is the strangers to the covenant of Yahweh. That's what, a, that's what the heathen are. They're strangers to the covenant. They don't know the covenant. To them, it's something that's strange because they haven't entered into that covenant. Remember, the covenant of Yahweh is that we will keep Yahweh's laws and we will allow Yahweh to write his laws, statutes, and judgments and ordinances into our hearts and into our minds. And then that we'll keep them. Then we have the right to call Yahweh our Heavenly Father. We have a right to say, yes, I am the house of Yahweh. I am Israel Hawkins. Because I do what the one that Yahweh has sent does. Okay? But if you don't do those things, then you have no right to call Yahweh your father. Okay? And as long as we do keep these things, then Yahweh will definitely call us his children. That's why he says... The world is waiting, the universe is waiting for, for the revealing of the sons and daughters of Yahweh. Um, but if you don't know these ordinances, you're deeply involved in sin yourselves. Remember Yeshua said, judge not so you won't be judged, you know. And then he also said, don't judge according to appearance because appearance sake doesn't mean anything. And Pastor goes on, he says, you know, I was glad, he says, when I started seeing our priest. He says, you know, they uphold the laws of Yahweh, and they became very strong for it here in the house of Yahweh. He said, I know this was Yahweh's inspiration. And they started trying to help people to turn them from sin. He said, the scripture says that the Pharisees, that they strengthen the hands of evildoers. And he told the priest, he says, we've got to stand strong against sin of any kind in the house of Yahweh. And we've got to counsel the people and get them to turn from this sin. You know, when people begin to listen for, to these things and understand what the laws of Yahweh teach about these things, then they start having that peace and they do start turning. And then there is peace in Yahweh's house for everyone. Um... He says, I, I meant to do this and never got around to it. He says, but I'm asking you to pray for the work. Pray for the needy. Pray for the sick. Pray for the strength of the followers to humble themselves and get inspiration of Yahweh to be able to humble themselves and get back to Yahweh's house. Pray for that. Pray for the work. Pray for his protection. Pray for the protection of the evangelist that's going out. He says, pray for their understanding, the safety Pray for the knowledge and understanding. Pray for the strength of the saints of Yahweh and the health of the saints. And he says, pray for the laborers and the harvest because we need more laborers to come and help in this work. And he says, of course, if you don't have the laws, statutes, and ordinances, they all teach you mercy of Yahweh. And he says, if you don't have mercy, then you're not a part of Yahweh's kingdom. Because Yahweh teaches mercy. Remember what Yeshua said to the people? He says, oh, you tithe and all these little things, Pharisees, you know. You know, you pick a, a, a branch of mint and you make sure you count every little leaf on there to make sure that you're going to tithe on every one of them. He said, but you leave out mercy. And Yahweh says, I would rather mercy than sacrifice. All right? The sacrifices don't mean anything. Unless you're keeping all of Yahweh's laws. That's how a sacrifice was acceptable before Yahweh. It wasn't the animal that they brought before the priest to slay and to burn on the altar. That was just something that was done as a reminder that that was your life that should be taken because of your sin. And it was burnt up. Showing what would take place in these last days through, the, through all of the wars and the nuclear holocaust that's going to take place. But the bringing the animal with a humble heart before Yahweh, that's what was acceptable before him. That's the reason why it says we make ourselves into a living sacrifice. We offer our bodies as a living sacrifice because if our hearts and our minds are right, that's what Yahweh looks for. That's what he accepts. And that's why he said that we no longer have to keep those sacrifices because they were just a reminder of these things. Once you've learned the lesson, 
then you can go on towards the perfection. And that's what he's working with us in these last days. And his, his, his laws and his prophecies tell us that in these last days, we're not required to bring, to have those sacrifices. We are a sacrifice. We understand what a sacrifice is. Okay? It's an actual, it, every time an animal is, is, is slaughtered properly according to the law, statutes, and ordinances of Yahweh, and then brought before Yahweh and, and asked to allow to partake of that animal, that is a sacrifice. And you sit down and you eat, and it shows forth the great joy that there is in eating. When you eat clean foods, you are glorifying Yahweh. You are offering that sacrifice to Yahweh, up to him. Because that's what it was, the eating of, of sacrifices, the eating of animals and so forth, whatever it was, or, or you know, um, baked products and so forth. These were all things that the heathen did, but they offered to their gods. The altar was the table in which they sat down before and offered these things to their gods. And they ate these animals and so forth that they offered to the gods and drank the blood. Everything that Yahweh said don't do, they did. Yahweh says don't eat of the blood. Why? Because in the life is the blood. There's things that are living inside that blood that when you eat of it, it's going to go inside your body, get inside your blood and go to the different organs of your body and destroy your body. So don't eat these things which I say are not healthy for you. And this goes all the way back to the time of Adam. You know, Adam knew what to eat and what not to eat. How do you think Noah knew that there was clean animals and unclean animals? If there was no law of the clean and the unclean before Noah's time. You know, it just shows the stupidity of this world, this Christian world, when they try and think the law was given to Moses. That old law was first given to Moses, you know. No, it was a renewing that he was bringing forth these things, making a renew in their minds. So they could come out of Egypt, and that was just a representation, because remember what it says in Uremia, that the, the coming out of Egypt is going to be forgotten. Because what's going to be remembered is us coming out of this world of tribulation and becoming the sons and daughters of Yahweh. Okay, that's what's going to be remembered. All these things were examples that were set for us, remember, to bring us to a certain point. Okay, so he goes on and he says, uh, remember what it says in Matthew chapter 5 about the Beatitudes here. And he says, blessed are those who mourn. He says, I want you to mourn. I want you to fast. I want you to pray and mourn before Yahweh because you're going to be comforted, he says. You will be comforted if you humble yourselves and do this. You know, fasting, we're only required by the law to fast one time a year. David Holman. That's it. However, Yeshua set the example and the apostles and the prophets set the example for the fact that, you know, fasting does something. It draws Yahweh's attention to you. You know, and you humble yourself before him. He says, blessed are the meek. Become a meek person like Yeshua. Don't become one that fights the priests because they're watching out for your souls. Blessed are the meek. They will inherit the earth. To inherit, that means to become a sharer or a possessor. You're going to share and become a possessor of the earth. The earth is given to the children of men, the scripture says. Okay, that's why Yahweh made man and put him on earth. But to do that and to, to, to inherit the earth means that you're going to have the responsibility of making sure the earth never turns back to the way it was under the sins of men. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst, they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful. And this is a part of the ordinance of the covenant of mercy. Remember that you've got that, that Yahweh has with his people, and we must become as Yahweh to one another. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see Yahweh. And blessed are the peacemakers, the peacemakers, the ones who carry the peaceful solution program to each other, the ones who live these, these things. You know, they will have great peace, as the scripture says. He says others. Now he goes on, he, he talked about... Uh, others are blamed. How he, he talks about how people are blamed. <coughs> people go to prison. They're blamed for what they did. Okay. And he says, like the Pharisees that brought the woman and slammed her down on the ground in front of Yeshua. You know, showing Yeshua how righteous they were. Okay. They did this, but they actually thought that they were righteous. The people were condemning the wrong people. They should have been condemning the system. Okay? Because the system is what causes us. The system that changed and transgressed the laws, 
changed the ordinances, broken the everlasting covenant. That's what they should be blaming, the system itself, because that's what's filled this whole earth with the evil rebellion that's sort of like Nimrod. But he says they won't repent. Yahweh says they won't repent. They think that they're right in what they're doing. He says, in telling you to sacrifice the Passover lamb, for instance, okay? He says, I'm telling you, it's the most evil thing you could do right now to try and get a lamb and make it take Yeshua's place. No way, he says, it's the most evil thing you could ever pull off. Think about it. Abraham said, told Isaac, he says, Yahweh will provide a lamb for himself. That was a prophecy. He would provide a lamb for himself. And then whenever Yeshua came on the scene, you remember what the disciples said? Look, behold, the lamb of Yahweh. How much plainer do you, can you get than that? Kepha, the apostle Kepha, remember he talked about Yeshua. He said, Yeshua is our Passover sacrifice. And then he talks about, he says, we are redeemed with the precious blood of Yeshua as a lamb. The precious blood of Yeshua. Yeshua, we know, was a perfect sacrifice. He was the Lamb of Yahweh. That, brothers, is understanding what the laws, statutes, and ordinances are about. Okay? Because it's the ordinances of, and the statutes of Yahweh's Passover that explain to us the reason why we don't have to kill a lamb at Passover time. You can't take Yeshua's place. Okay? That was a one-time thing. Yeshua is our sacrifice. He paid the price. And he's not going to go back and die over and over and over and over again. And that's what you'd be saying. You know, if you want to sacrifice a lamb over and over and over again, every, every Passover, you're saying that Yeshua should come back and die year after year after year after year. And that's the ones who say that they don't believe in the one that's sent. They say they don't believe the scriptures because the scriptures prove that Israel Hawkins is the one sent. Okay? That this is the house of Yahweh. He can't be deceived. He is the elect. He can't be deceived. I mean, this would not be the house of Yahweh. It'd be the house of Satan. It'd be just like any other house that's out there. But this is the house of Yahweh. It's established through the prophecies. Through the prophecies. That's why Yeshua said, you're a fool not to believe all that the prophets have spoken. So you should easily see why you have to believe in the one that is sent and why everybody in the world has to believe that he is the one sent. He says, I want you to understand. He says, I'm not trying to deceive you. I'm trying to get you to understand what the scripture says, to show you what the scripture actually says. And Yahweh says, blessed are those who read and those who hear. So humble yourselves to Yahweh. Okay? Praise Yahweh. May Yahweh bless you, man. If you go ahead and stand. Let's raise our hands. Almighty Heavenly Father Yahweh, this is Cohen Michael Hawkins. Ask him to come before you, Father, with all the righteous men in your house now, Father, as we come before you. We thank you, Father, being able to rehearse these words of our great teacher. We ask and pray, Father, uh, that as we come before you uh, through his authority, Father, as being seeds of your last day's witness, is Rabel Hawkins, and through your son, Yeshua Messiah, the high priest of your house. We thank you, Father, so much for being able to rehearse these words and come before you, Father, through our high priest. We thank you for these laws, statutes, and judgments, and ordinances that you have set forth in your laws, Father, to be able to, uh, to explain these things unto us so we can understand and know, Father, we're not being deceived, that we're being taught every righteous thing that's in your holy and righteous word, Father, that you're leading and guiding your house, and that your son, Yeshua Messiah, is the high priest of your house, that this is your great house, Father, and we thank you and we rejoice and we praise you for pulling us out of this world and giving us the knowledge, wisdom, and understanding that you have, Father, to believe in the one whom you have sent. We ask and pray that you would bless our beloved pastor and overseer, Israel Hawkins, that you would continue to strengthen him, Father, in all that he does, so that he can continue to do, do this work, Father. Help him realize, Father, that all he does is a great benefit and, and tremendous blessing, that we love him, Father. We thank him so very much for the things that you inspire him to do and that his work is not in vain, Father. And we ask and pray that you continue to be with us, go with us in peace, and help us, Father, as we be an example 
uh, truly serving one another and loving one another, Father, that we may see your kingdom come soon. We bless you, thank you, and praise you, and ask you to bless us this Sabbath day as we uh, go before the priest, Father, to confess our sins and, and to rejoice before you on your Sabbath day, learning even more of your perfect laws, Father, that will bring us to completion. We thank you and praise you, and we ask these things in Yeshua's name. Hallelujah, Yahweh.